On the last episode of Heartbeats, Teresa Fleming was in the home stretch of a high-risk diabetic pregnancy when she discovered her diabetes may have caused a serious complication. So, we need some movement here. And Eileen Wilson learns the results from her breast biopsy. I really am hoping that it's just something that has to be removed and I can go on with life. It would be nice. Teresa Fleming has been a diabetic almost her whole life. She and her husband Jim have only been married a year and want a family. Teresa is now due to give birth in two weeks, but her diabetes has put her pregnancy at high risk, both for her and her developing baby. Oh, so we need some movement here. Her latest ultrasound didn't detect any movement from her baby. An immediate stress test was ordered. Now, Teresa and Jim wait to learn of the results from the high-risk pregnancy team, headed by Dr. Hani Akuri. Hi. It was a long day for you today. Oh, yeah? my goodness, yes. They couldn't um, get her to move, so they had to do all this stuff. OK. <laughs> we go into periods of activities and slowing down. And once they slow down, forget it. You can take them to the discotheque. Nothing will wake them up. <laughs> so the measurements were done in, in uh, your ultrasound. They're all fine. Is Now that Teresa knows the tests for her baby are OK, her next big concern, when and how the baby must be delivered. I'm finished being pregnant. I was finished being pregnant last Thursday. Um, it just gets to a point where, you know what, you've had enough. I mean, I'm hoping he doesn't say, let's wait another week. So our date is April 8th. Yeah, is, well, yeah, is my due yeah. date. But then yeah. when, when will we induce me? Dr. Yeah. Akuri would like to see Teresa's baby develop as far as possible without getting too large. This means he must induce Teresa at precisely the right time. We have to check the baby's condition. How good is the sugar con controlled? If no complication with the baby happening, or with you, and the condition of your cervix. Put that all together and come up with a date. I'm a bit concerned because the head hasn't dropped where it should be. It should have done by that time. And if it doesn't? If the signs are clearly that it's not responding, we'll switch and do this again. Okay. Eileen Wilson works in telecommunications for a large bank. She recently discovered a small lump in her right breast. Today, she'll learn whether or not the lump is malignant. Hi, I've got an appointment with Dr. Hanna. I had the biopsy two weeks ago. It was a little nerve-wracking. I'm expecting confirmation that it is cancerous. So you had your core biopsy done, what, was it about two weeks ago? Yes. Okay, so Dr. Holloway will review all those reports with you. You can ask whatever questions you want. After Dr. Holloway's finished, I'll come back in again and speak with you. Okay. okay. Eileen's specialist is Dr. Claire Holloway, a breast surgeon in high demand at Sunnybrook and Women's College Health Sciences Center. There are a variety of different strategies that we use to deal with patients' anxieties and fears. Some manage much better by facing their fears directly and seeking out information. Others don't find that helpful and simply prefer support and the sense that they can uh, lean on their caregivers to uh, guide them through the process. <laughs> I really am hoping that it's just something that has to be removed and I can go on with life. It would be nice. Hi. Now 39 weeks pregnant, Teresa and Jim are back to visit the high-risk pregnancy team. Hi. Morning. How Morning. are you? How are you? Good. So how is the sugar going? It has decreased a little bit, so it was like 17 units difference. Okay. Okay, can you lie down, please? Yeah, the head is coming down now. 
So, Teresa, I guess the time has come now to do something for you. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's good we waited a bit longer. The head now is a bit lower than before. I'm okay. happier with it. The cervix started to shorten. Well, are you just going to induce or are you yes. going to do a C-section? Yeah. yeah, if you don't progress, it takes a long time, and we'll just take plan B and do a C-section. I'm just looking to the labor floor. They are willing to take you today. Wow. Excited? <laughs> From my experience. Take it when they have it. Okay. Yeah, so they are not busy this afternoon. Okay, well, we've got all our stuff in the van. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> wow. Eileen anxiously waits for Dr. Holloway to arrive and inform her of the test results. Yes, it's always hard because I'm preparing myself for it, but it's. Wilson, are you here by yourself? Yes, sir. So as you know, the reason we're meeting here today is to go over the results of what the tissue samples showed. Mm -hmm. That small nodule that they were looking at is a very small cancer. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I'm just confirming what I had thought, and uh, I was just hoping maybe it might not be. But, uh, I guess. Uh, that's the next step. First of all, we can take out the, uh, the tumor that's there with a good rim of normal tissue around it, and then we treat the breast with radiation afterwards. Okay. We also need to know if this has affected any other areas, and the most likely area it uh, may have affected is the uh, lymph glands underneath your arm. The standard approach has been to remove the fat pad that's underneath the arm, and the fat pad has all the lymph nodes embedded in it. There is a newer technique being used for evaluating lymph nodes. We use two different kinds of dye. One is a, a radioactive type of dye that's injected into the breast around where the tumor is. The dye tends to get held up in the first one or two uh, lymph nodes. It doesn't tell us though whether the node has any cancer cells in it or not. Nice. That requires examination under a microscope. The sentinel node is the, f is the node of first drainage from the breast tumor. If those so-called sentinel lymph nodes are free of cancer, then the likelihood that all the other remaining lymph nodes in the fat pad are also free of cancer is extremely high, and we can safely leave them behind. I think it's most important that you feel that the options you've selected are ones you're going to be happy with. I like the newer uh, option that you described, and technology moves on, and I'm always supportive of new technology. The moment has finally arrived. Teresa's labor will be induced with a gel to get contraction started, but whether she delivers without a C-section is yet unknown. It's certainly what her doctor prefers. Hey, Mama, it's Teresa. Hey, um, they're gonna keep me. Hi, Ma. It's Jimmy. I call on my cell phone. Induce me. Okay. Okay. Oh, I said okie dokie. <laughs> Wait until tomorrow. <laughs> Jim's gonna have, like, heart failure here. I am. I'm just, like... everything's just catching up. Lifelong diabetic Teresa Fleming has finally been admitted to hospital to start the induction process for birth. It's not really stress, it's just you're anxious. You just want to get it over and done with so you can start on with the rest of your life because right now things are on hold. So, my name is Mary and it's Teresa and my Jim. husband Jim. Jim. Hi. Hi. Most diabetic pregnancies like Teresa's have to be induced because the baby is often too large to go to full term without endangering the mother. Now, Teresa has to get settled before the induction can start. Oh, you look sexy. Okay. This is the gel. Okay. And it's the Dr. Akuri will begin by giving Teresa special gel to soften the cervix and start labor contractions. Gel. Okay. There you go. So, we'll see you later. I'm going to check with the doctor on call. If there's any problem, she will let me know and I'll come here and I'll take care of you. Okie dokie. All right, so I'll see you in a few hours. 
Eileen's surgery for a lumpectomy fast approaches. She's brought her husband Bob with her to hospital for a pre-op session to learn what will happen to her. Any health issues, asthma, diabetes, kidney problems, anything like that? No. And you'll be able to take your wife home on the day of discharge? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it will be something. Are you aware of what they do with the sentinel node? If they show cancers, then they will go to the next level and then I understand it's a m more major surgery. That's right. If it's positive, then they will go on ahead and do the auxiliary node dissection, which means they'll take out more nodes and you'll have a, an incision under your arm. Mm -hmm. You'll have a drain in if they do that. And most women complain of a numbness in the upper part of their arm after this surgery. And it can take a while for that to return to normal. Hopefully I'm just off the period of time that it takes to recuperate from the surgery. And when I see Dr. Holloway, I will get a clean bill of health and go back. Eileen and Bob can leave knowing they're in good hands. But the big worry is whether cancer cells may have already spread to the lymph nodes and possibly other organs. Two hours later, and Dr. Akuri needs to check on Teresa one last time before he leaves. But her sugar levels have been fluctuating. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm OK. Her sugar was 2.9, so she's oh. had some dinner. Good. Yeah. So she's got, yeah. a, you know, contractions yeah. that she feels and some that she doesn't feel. How is the baby doing? All right, so I got to let me examine you and see what's happening down there. Okay, no, there hasn't been much change in that series. Too much uh, optimism. <laughs> All right. I'm going to introduce you Dr. Lou, who's on call. So okay. She will be coming shortly. I'm going to get her. Oh, okay. So I give her the option to walk around for half an hour, an hour around, see if this help her back ache and then reassess her again. I see. Now, as far as 9 o'clock, that's where she comes, her next gel. gel. If she's still contracting, yes, you have to pass it and see if you can put an oxytocin, whatever you feel fit. Hi. So that's Dr. Lou. Hi. How are you? Great. Yeah. It's nice to meet you. You too. Hi. I'm Jim. Hi, Jim. So it's going to be a long one. We'll be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Right. Yeah. Bye. Eileen arrives in the early morning at Sunnybrook and Women's College Hospital for her lumpectomy. I'm a little nervous, a little apprehensive. Yeah. Uh, my surgery is at 1 o'clock today. Good morning. Good morning. I'm just uh, thinking very positive. I'm looking forward to uh, waking up from the surgery. <laughs> it's been seven hours since Teresa's induction began, and she's getting anxious to advance things further. Usually your contractions really start to pick up once you've uh, broken the waters. Oh, am I dilated? You're about one centimeter dilated. Well, wow. I'll break the water. Okay, will this hurt to break the water? No more than what you're feeling now, okay? Good for you. Wonderful job. Beautiful. So you did great. I know it wasn't comfortable, but you did wonderful. Okay. Now, when do you guys recommend the epidural kind of thing? Anytime you want it. I think I'm going to get it. Yeah? Yeah. In which case, once you get your epidural, we'll just start on the oxytocin right away. And get things okay. Yeah. Teresa's sugar levels must remain as even as possible. The team doesn't want to risk the stress an uneven labor pattern could put on her. So oxytocin, a synthetic hormone, is ordered to create consistent and strong contractions. And just stand on your left. Eileen enters radiology for the first stage of a complex surgery to remove a breast cancer tumor and lymph nodes. First, the radiologist locates Eileen's tumor with a tiny wire. It will remain in place throughout surgery to help Eileen's surgeon find the malignant lump. I'm just getting my landmarks now, so I'm just making little marks in your skin. Right now, I'm just putting the needle in, and inside is that little thin wire, and I'm going to thread that wire through the lump. So I'm just going to check that. The cancer is right here, this small area, and Dr. Holloway will just follow that wire and take out this area. The gentleman that just left that came in and gave me an epidural, I was really nervous at first. Um, it, just hurts, it just hurts me horror stories. All right, so what I'm going to do is start your oxytocin. Okay? 
we've started. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to um, step out of the room for a few minutes while you have a bit of a rest, and um, I'll come back and turn your oxytocin up just to make sure that these contractions are nice and strong and regular. Okay. Time to have a little bit of a nap. Okay. And rest. The next stage of Eileen's prep for surgery involves the painful injection of radioactive dye. The hope is that this dye will help guide Eileen's surgeon to the sentinel nodes closest to the tumor. You have to do four injections and one little small one, so okay? Mm -hmm. It stings. We're going to be through in a second, okay? okay. We're all finished. It's 3.20 in the morning, and Teresa's been in active labor now for four hours. The oxytocin drip has helped keep her contractions consistent, but the drip has also created problems that can't go on. Watching the baby's heartbeat go up and down and dip below that line there sounds like, what the heck's going on? So, so Basically what's been going on is with contractions, the heart rate is going down. We're no longer comfortable doing it because the baby can eventually become so stressed that um, we won't tolerate anything and we'll have to rush down the hall. We opted for the C-section. Seemed to be less stressful for the baby. So baby's coming, becoming less and less happy. So we're, we're good to go. Um, I'm, a little, I'm a little nervous. He kept going with the oxytocin, the more deceleration she was having. And so, but the problem is as soon as you stop the oxytocin, she doesn't have a great labor pattern. And so it was a little bit of a catch-22. So we're just landmarking now to decide where we should go with our incision. Now we've just entered the abdominal cavity. And so you can see here, this, here's the uterus right here. Okay. There we go, and here's the baby. It's really cute. When they were taking her out of me, Jim popped his head over the covers, and I just I saw his look of like, oh my God. I couldn't see her, but I could see her through him. Just his look of disbelief, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's here. Eight pounds, three point seven ounces. Okay. Congratulations, she's beautiful. Jim and Teresa are delighted new parents of little girl Sydney, but the toll of 13 hours of induction and labor have caught up with Teresa. Oh, we just finished sewing up the uterus, and then uh, we'll go on and close the rest of the abdomen. Okay. Shaking's okay. That's so yeah. We're just going to close the fascia now. Done. She's done a really good job over the nine months, and now I have to just keep it together for her. She's a little um, nauseated during the operation, so we had to give her some medication to help her not throw up during the operation because they tend not to throw up very well. Everything looks really good. Mom's doing well. Um, baby's blood sugar is actually really good. And um, we, mom's sugar is a little high, so we're paging Dr. Uh, Kelly. Usually you get a honeymoon period of about 24 hours before the sugars start to um, climb. But the honeymoon period is already over. Teresa's blood sugar levels have risen suddenly after delivery. Her endocrinologist is consulted by the team. Radiology has now prepared Eileen for the lumpectomy procedure ahead. I'm hoping that it'll go nice and clean. There'll be no complications and she'll come home tonight because if she stays here, it means that there's complications. And, you know, hoping for the best, and there's not much I can do about it, so what'll happen will happen. Endocrinologist Dr. Kelly conveys immediate instructions for Teresa. Dr. Kelly, who wants her put back on the pump, so I'm just going to go up to our room to get that. Yesterday, I think I put my pump back on at about 8.30 or so. My sugars were starting to go a little high. After the C-section, I was actually really sick. She's kind of been a trooper because they've been taking her blood every two hours. She doesn't like it, but she's, you know what, I think she's done pretty good with it. She's doing very well. 
Her uh, baby also is doing well. She has no complications so far. The sugar is getting well controlled. She's passing gas. And her incision is good. I think she's doing remarkably well. Three days after delivery, and the baby's own blood sugars seem fine. Teresa's on the road to healing from the C-section. It's now time for the family to head back to their new home and start the life they've been working towards for so long. It's not just me and Teresa anymore, it's the three of us, you know, Teresa and Sydney and me. It's really incredible. Just an amazing feeling. I have many diabetics who went on and have more than one shot. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Being pregnant and a diabetic can be a lot of work, yes. But you know what? It's all worth it. Coming up, highlights from the next episode. On the next episode of Heartbeats, Eileen undergoes innovative breast cancer surgery. I guess anything can happen. Never thought I would have cancer either. And Lisa Marie's battle with skin disease. The effects of it and the itch, the constant itch where it scratches so bad you want to just dig your skin out. 